Hi, I'm Susan Baggins, and I am an encourager, a scribe, and the silly mother of three hobbits. And today I wanted to come and talk to you about hope. Um, I know diddly squat about hope, and I'm trying to understand and grasp and hold on to hope. Um, it's my word for the year. And when I was praying about a word for this year, I decided hope was the word, partly because I struggle with depression. And so this is probably equally a talk about hope as it is about depression. And I know diddly squat about both, um, even though I've struggled with depression pretty much all my life. And I also have a degree in counseling, so I've studied depression and I understand uh, to a certain degree things about it, but it's a little bit di more difficult when you actually are the sufferer of the illness. And thankfully, uh, being aware of my illness and the triggers and the challenges, I can cope probably better um, with that. Anyway, hope. I know totally squat about hope. And it was one of those things that years ago, as I was struggling, somebody said to me, you know, I think your issue isn't so much the circumstances that you're dealing with. And the circumstances were challenging, and they still are. But it's that you don't have any hope. Now, I believe in Jesus Christ. I love the Lord. I serve at my church. I have taught classes. Um, I have the honor of teaching children, um, young adults, I should say, uh, high school stu students this year. And um, I have kids of my own. And I, I'm an encourager. I try to offer hope to others. But sometimes I have a hard time finding hope for myself. And I do see a therapist. You know, I am not afraid of uh, digging deep and learning to grow and being challenged. And I'm so grateful for the person that God has brought into my life to have that position. So I have a safe person to go to with my challenges um, and get wise counsel. She's not emotionally invested in me, so she's objective. And that's a good thing. Um, I don't want somebody who's going to pussyfoot around and just try to placate me. Um, although I need some of those people too, <laughs> don't we all? Um, but I needed somebody who was going to be willing to challenge me and who was going to encourage me, but also um, give me uh, next steps. And last year, one of the things that she said to me as I was struggling, really, really difficult depression, um, she said, you're you have no hope. You feel helpless and hopeless. And that is what is driving a lot of this emotion. No, granted, depression is still a chemical issue. And there's a lot of things I can do, obviously, physically to help with that. I take walks. I do take medication. I'm trying to eat better. Um, I I'm trying to improve ways that I care for myself better. But depression still hits. And life sometimes sucks. Can I say that? Yeah, I can. It's my YouTube channel. I can say whatever I want. Anyway, um, when I was starting to look at hope, I was starting to look at scriptures. And so I want to share some of these scriptures and some of them end up just being quotes. And so hopefully, um, because I know diddly squat about hope, thankfully, um, our God knows so much more because he is the giver of hope. And Psalm 9, 18 says, For the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted perish forever. Psalm 39, 7, And now, Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. And I, I know that even when life is hard, and yesterday was one of those days where I shed a lot of tears. And now I'm probably going to do it again. Um, because I was overwhelmed. I was angry. I was frustrated. I, um, 
I actually went to, I served um, the worship teams at my church, and it's very rare um, for me to even tell my kids this, but somebody's like, are you okay? And I said, um, no, I'm not okay. And I said, uh, my buttons have been getting pushed, and I just would prefer nobody else push any more buttons because you really will not like what you see. And the person who asked me that was like, okay, I'm going to stay away from you. Um, and thankfully, I was by myself in the booth, and there were no major technical issues, and I was able to um, kind of bury myself in the task that I had to do and not dwell on the situation in which I feel helpless and hopeless in as I wait for God to move and to act. Um, Psalm 71 5 says, For you are my hope, O Lord God, you are my confidence from my youth. And uh, I came to understand the personal relationship that I could have with Jesus Christ when I was 15. So that from my youth um, is huge. And here I am getting all watery eyed. I'm not going to apologize. This is the raw, real me. No makeup. You know, this is, I'm getting ready this morning to go off to, uh, to do some training for a new job that I'm doing. Um, but just felt like this was a time to have a chat because the dog's not barking and the kids aren't up yet to disturb me. Uh, I love this one in Romans 5, 5. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And then Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so you will abound in hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. And then um, Fyodor Dostoevsky, I hope I said that right. Um, it's kind of funny when you're an avid reader, sometimes you'll pronounce words and names wrong just because that's the way you read them. But he said, to live without hope is to cease to live. And I think he's right. I think he's, he's very right that when we have no hope, life really isn't lived well. Um, Emily Dickinson said, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings tunes without words and never stops at all. Isn't that beautiful? Anne Lamont said, hope begins in the dark, the stubborn hope that if you just show up and try to do the right thing, the dawn will come. You wait and watch and work, and you don't give up. I think James, um, the first chapter of James, talks about persevering and how perseverance brings growth. And um, it's that, that hope that we have that God is going to work. And I think that's where faith comes in. I mean, hope and faith are inextricably entwined. Um, that as I hope and have faith in God, even when I'm hurting and even when uh, things aren't going the way I want them to, or even when I just feel like I have absolutely no control over my circumstances. Because sometimes we don't. I mean, we often talk about, you always have choices. Well, you do have some choices. You have a choice as to how you're going to react to things. And I think, though, oftentimes I have stuffed my emotions instead of allowing myself to feel them. And so for me, having a day where I'm weepy and crying, I'm learning to be okay with that because it's part of being human and it's part of being authentic in that um, life sometimes hurts. And excuse me. Kleenex isn't close by, and I need it. So, here we go. Dab, dab, dab. Sniff, sniff. Just what you wanted to watch on a video, right? Okay, a few more quotes that um, Vincent McNabb said, Hope is some extraordinary spiritual grace that God gives us to control our fear, not to oust them. So hope 
is something, it's, it's a grace from God. And fear is going to come. And fear can be useful. I was watching, um, I don't know if I was, I think I was watching a preview to a Star Trek movie or something like that, or one of those movie trailers. And I think Spock said something like, you know, fear is irrational. And uh, the doctor's like, no, fear is what keeps us alive. <laughs> so I think that that hope is that that spiritual grace that helps us control the fear, um, helps us to work through that fear and persevere in spite of that fear. So Vincent McNabb, I think he got that right. Matthew Pryor wrote, hope is the dream of those who wait. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. I may know diddly squat about hope, but there's a lot of people who do understand it better than I do. And then I have a few things that I've written in my journal that just struck me about hope, just my own thoughts. Um, hope is a powerful thing, and when it dies, life is more painful. Proverbs, I think it's 13, 12, talks about her, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Um, so this is kind of my version of that. Uh, and I, I wrote down, too, that hope is the first thing depression kills. And I think that's true, that, um, that when depression hits hard, hope is the first thing to die. And that's why I think hope is my, my word for the year, because I know that if I want to live, if I want to thrive, if I want to get through the challenges that are facing me right now, I have to hold on to hope, the hope of Jesus Christ, the hope that, and the faith that he is going to work, even when I can't see it. John Piper has said, and I'm going to get the number wrong, but he has said, you know, God is doing, you know, like 10,000 things behind the scenes that we never even see. So we just have to wait. Um, he is always acting on our behalf. And I just remember a time when I didn't believe that. I think sometimes when I've written my stories, I, I let my characters experience that despair, that, that fear that, yeah, God is love, but, but me, God loving me, caring about me, that's a little vain, don't you think? Um, but he does. He, he died for the world, but I'm part of that world. And he created me unique, just like he created you unique. And I have to have that hope that he has a plan and I'm not quoting Jeremiah 29, 11, but he has a plan and a purpose for my life. And I'm going to pull something off the wall. Um, I should have done this before, but it just dawned on me that this might be relevant. I got this uh, plaque as a gift from some friends years ago. I mean, like, probably 20 years ago and I still have it but I have to tell you I really struggled to believe the truth of what this says and this is what uh, Roy Lesson wrote in this plaque it says just think you're here not by chance but by God's choosing his hand formed you and made you the person you are he compares you to no one else. You are one of a kind. You lack nothing that his grace can't give you. He has allowed you to be here at this time in history to fulfill his special purpose for this generation. I don't doubt that God created me. Sometimes I wonder what he was thinking. Um, I'm sure sometimes my kids wonder what he was thinking. <laughs> and maybe even some of my friends. Um, hope. Hope provides a fresh vision for the future. And without it, everything is dark.
That's from my journal. Those are my words. I can be profound sometimes too. So I know diddly squat about hope because I'm still struggling to hold on to it. And as I share that with you, it's because maybe some of you are struggling with difficult circumstances, challenges you're facing and you can't see your way out. It's like being in a smoke filled dark room, the fire is coming and you can't find the exit. That's what a lack of hope and what depression is like. Um, it's, it's a wet blanket that is heavy and wool and scratchy and it covers and blocks out everything and you can't see that glimmer of light. Hope is that anchor that we hold on to when the storms come. And I have hope. I trust in God. Sometimes I feel like maybe it's a fairy tale that I believe in, that um, that this that, that God has planted this seed in my heart. That as I just continue to obey and trust in Him, He's going to make it right. That the things that other people have chosen to do that have hurt me and wounded me deeply. God will redeem that pain. I've seen him do it in the past. He has a track record with me of being extremely faithful. And when I lose hope, I forget about that. Sometimes I need people to remind me that, you know, the, the stories of the way God has moved and acted. And sometimes it's little things that I can look at and I can say that God... God is here. He knows my pain. He knows your pain. And I have to remind myself of those little things that he does to remind me of his presence. I see it when I study his word. I see it um, sometimes in just the surprising things. You know, um, I might lay down and my dog comes and just starts you know, kissing me. He knows my moods and he cares and he's giving me hope and reminding me that maybe if somebody else doesn't find me lovable, he does. And my um, ability to be loved isn't um, my issue, it's that other person's issue. So I'm sorry to be kind of weeping and I don't even know I'm apologizing for that. I was raised kind of, I guess, believing that that wasn't something that was acceptable. And the fact is, this is real life. And hope is a hard thing to hold on to. And I just want to encourage you to, um, if you're struggling with depression, if you're struggling to find hope, cling to God. Find some people who, who know the Lord, who can give you that hope, who can pray for you, who can lift you up, and who can remind you um, of his faithfulness. And, and that's what I always need to do. And I think maybe that's why I wanted to do this talk today because in a way, I'm not talking to whoever it is out there in YouTube world, the World Wide Web, who needs to hear this message. I'm saying it for myself, for my own benefit. Uh, I do watch my own videos to make sure that they actually look halfway decent and that I didn't say something utterly ridiculous because I don't script these. I want these to be as if I were sitting across from you with my mug and my cup of hot chai having a conversation um, and that this would be a time of encouragement for you and that I could offer you that because I may know diddly squat about hope, but I do know that um, having somebody speak words of truth into your life and encouraging you can make a world of difference. So that is my hope for you today. And I just, um, I have a bracelet here that says hope. I don't think you can see it very well in the screen. And I have an anchor that goes with it. Somebody knew that my word this year was hope and knew that I was challenging or dealing with some challenging circumstances. So they gave me these really cute earrings that I wear a lot because um, they remind me that 
one, I can have hope in Christ, and two, that somebody loved me enough to pay attention. And then I'm also wearing uh, this really pretty necklace. Um, you probably can't see it very well, and everything's always reversed here. And uh, I can't get it close enough, I don't think, for you to say. But it says, she believed she could, so she did. And it was a Christmas present. I have no idea who it came from. It came in the mail. And no return address. No clue. Um, it came to my home address, which very few people know or knew at that time. Now it's an address I use all the time. Um, and uh, it's just a reminder that I can have hope because God is with me and he is the one who sees beyond the veil of the future that I can't look into. So having said all that, I hope <laughs> and pray that you will have a blessed day, that you will walk away from our little conversation here with more hope and that God will just richly bless you and that you will feel his tangible presence because he is worthy, he is faithful, and he is the one who is the ultimate source of our hope and our joy. Blessings over and out from Middle Earth.